2GB Sydney, 4BC Brisbane and network stations across Australia. It's time for Nights with John Stanley. Good evening everyone, welcome. Here we are at 7 minutes past 8. It is a Tuesday night and as always your chance to have your say during this hour. Whatever it might be, 131873, you can get us via text 0460 873 873. Of course, we know what the issue of the day is. There's a lot of discussion. We talked about it last night. Vaccinations, whether you're going to be required to be vaccinated to go into a business, whether businesses are going to be accommodated, whether businesses are going to be able to say, well, I don't want to do that, and whether you're going to be able to say, I don't want to do that. It is going to be quite an issue over the next four to six weeks, but I did want to start with some positive news. And so you trawl around the place, and surely this is the story that we ought to be trumpeting tonight because we've got this organisation, the Bureau of Agriculture and Resource Economics, which does the audit on how our farmers are going, and they've said today that there's about to be a record broken, that our farmers will grow $73 billion worth of produce this financial year. The first time they've got through the $70 billion barrier, it's up from 66.3 in the previous year and 59.6 in the drought year where we were talking about the place being bone dry and people being on the bones of their... Per, uh, per, uh, we know what we're talking about there. But th- uh, that's that's great news. And there's there's uh, look, there's droughts in Russia, Canada, the United States... Hopefully we can get the people in to uh, to essentially uh, harvest the crops, move the crops. But it's great news for our farmers, I would have thought. So that's my little bit of good news to start the day. I'm sure our next guest's got some, so let's get into it. Joe! Joe! We love Joe! Now on nights... You don't have to be good in politics. You only have to be better than the alternative. Joe Hildebrand. Evening, man. Always lovely to start the night. It is good news, though, with the farmers, because you think two years ago, two and a half years ago, things were so dire. Yeah, and except except now we've got the bumper crop. There's no one to pick it. This is the thing. We have to we make sure. We don't have enough backpackers. We have to make sure we get the people in there to, to pick the stuff. Yeah. Which they are trying to do, and they're going to have, I think, farm stays and stuff like that, and they're working on it. But, uh, you know, be able to quarantine it. And they're going to deal with the mice the as the well. Bloody mice. I mean, once you get rid of the backpackers, then you've got to get rid of the mice. That's right. When will it end? That's right. Look, if you live in one of those regional areas, and you've probably listened to us uh, over the last two, three years, we were doing, uh, through our network, there were broadcasts being done in some of the drought areas. We were talking to places, beautiful Stanthorpe uh, in, mm-hmm. in southern Queensland there, where they had no water. Yep. Now, a lot of these issues are still there in terms of water supply and the like. But for the, for our farmers, it's such good news. It's extraordinary. I just wish we could get all the good news at once. Like, I just wish we could get, you know, not, you know, hey, we've all got COVID, but at least there are no bushfires. Like, how about not burning to death and also not being hit by the plague just at the same time? Yep. Yep. So right. just, you know. So we'll get rid of the mice. Well, we'll bring let's, the go, let's go in. through the orders. It went drought, fire, yep. flood, yep. plague. That's right. That's that is right. the book of revelations. It is. It is. That, that's the four horsemen of the apocalypse, isn't it? Just be very careful there because somewhere someone has the book of revelation out. And they, there are people in America who think it's the end times. They're, 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 mm. they, they're, they're tracking it all and they think we're heading toward the yeah. end times. You say that like they're not right. One three one eight seven three. Is Wait, what the, more does uh, it take? What more evidence do you want? Yep. So they missed it by about twenty one years. Whatever. One three one eight. Back. Se- yeah. One three one eight seven three is the number. Look, there's been a meeting this afternoon uh, for people outside Greater Sydney. You need to remember what's yeah. happening because, and, and I keep saying, touch wood. For our listeners through 4BC and our network of stations through Queensland, where of course the borders are closed, mm-hmm. and there are a few cases they're dealing with, there is this nervous wait to make sure that they can keep Delta out of Queensland, and the government there is trying to do it. They're keeping the borders closed, but of course the last album you, wasn't that bad. But you can still get to, you know, you can still go to the pub and go to restaurants. In New South Wales, there's a lockdown. In Greater Sydney, you've got 12 local government areas where everything's locked down. You can go out for a couple of hours a day with people from your own house. Yep. And after nine o'clock, so in about 50 minutes, 
you're, you've got to stay inside your house. You can't go out. And they're saying, well, look, the everyone's doing the right thing. Vaccination levels in some of those areas up to 90%. It's huge. Black and, town. And, and they're massive. saying, well, well, you know, this is we're not getting anything in return. Yeah, I think it's outrageous. I think that these, these areas have suffered more than enough. They've gone and done the right thing, despite coming from very challenging backgrounds. And that was arguably one of the reasons why they were so vulnerable in the first place. But... Why on earth wouldn't you say, you know what, you've done the time, you've gone and done what I asked you. Why not say that to everybody? I mean, we're going to be hitting 50% fully vaxxed and 80% with the first jab any day now. Why on earth? Where, where are the freedoms we were, we were promised? What happened to we'll get to 6 million and you'll have more freedoms? Like, where's that? Have you seen my hair? Yeah, I can see it. Well, you're being got, told that on, on the 18th, now I'll ask you this question. I don't know if I'm going to be lot. We, we, I'm we, going to have a fro by the 18th of October. We, we had Peter Credlin on last night. We have, now you're on tonight and there was we, there was quite a debate last night on this question of, and, and again, I think it may have to come to, maybe in other states there'll be the same question being asked. So you get to third week of October, hairdressers open. The government still hasn't spelt out whether it will mandate that hairdressers can only open to vaccinated people and the staff have to be vaccinated. Now, the government has indicated that that'll be mm. the case. You, if you're vaccinated, you can go to the hairdresser. The corollary of that is if you're not vaccinated, you can't go to the hairdresser. That's right. And so it, we'll be able to tell all the anti-vaxxers because they'll well, have massive dreadlocks. Well, well, so, but, but, but then we've got businesses today, a number of businesses posting on, on, on social media, and some of them have pulled it down. They're saying, well, we're going to welcome everyone because mm. we're not, you know, they, 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 it, they can discriminate. We've yep. established it's legal to say, well, I don't want people, you can legally discriminate. It's yep. no problem and if, with if, that. If businesses want to say, and we'll let you know, we'll let anyone in, whether you're vaccinated or not. I think that's entirely their prerogative. It may open them to to legal action down the track, but assuming they but, but declare is that to going everyone, to be the case? Is, is is the government going to put out health orders, or is it going to get to the third week of October? But the, the, this is the thing: if the government just allowed more freedoms for fully vaccinated people, it would solve both these problems because it would create a massive incentive for everyone to go out and get vaccinated before you hit that 70 to 80% threshold, which everyone thinks is eventually just going to trickle down to everybody anyway. So people, all the, the vaccine hesitant or the anti-vaxxers are just holding out and just say, well, once they get to 80, they're not going to be able to, to lock us out forever and it'll all be things. So they're not coming forward. Whereas if you had everyone uh, saying, listen, you're only going to get this um, if you're vaccinated and you can get it now if you come out and get the jab. Already New South Wales, the vaccination rates after this heroic effort uh, has started to taper off a little bit in the last 24 hours to, um, to this morning. So, so why on earth wouldn't you just give just the mother of all carrots to people to come out, get vaccinated right now, then you can drive that rate way past 80, way past probably even 90 to the normal vaccination rate we have for other things. And then the the idiot douchebags who don't want to do it aren't as much of a problem because you have something resembling the same herd immunity we have for smallpox or whooping cough or yep. all the other things where the, the crazy anti-vaxxers... So you'd open things up earlier? For the fully vaccinated. I would say if you are fully vaccinated, hairdresser, again, perfect example. This is what the Dr. Ross is If saying. you've got a fully vaccinated hairdresser who wants to cut some fully vaccinated hair... Why on earth should the government get in between that and say you can't do that? Why on earth wouldn't you have even something like home visits, for example? Why wouldn't you have... Fully vaccinated grandparents fully vaccinated, visit a fully that, vaccinated family. That's right. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely and utterly insane that we are still in this stasis period when we know what's going to happen when we get to, to mid-October. Everyone is going and getting vaccinated and is doing the same thing. Why on earth... And if anything, allowing those freedoms just for the fully vaccinated would give you some indication of just how yep. that is going to impact on case numbers or hospitalizations. And it would give you an indication of what you can expect at 70 or 80 percent and whether that should be just for the vaccinated or just for others. I do not. I mean, I'm nothing if not a moderate man, but I can't. But it sounds, it's, it's almost like moderation and common sense has become the new sort of radicalism. Why wouldn't you just incrementally say, all right, well, you can just do this for the vaccinated and we'll start with one thing and we'll add another thing, add another thing, add another thing, freedom after freedom, day by day, whatever. And then when you see what it's doing and whether it's screwing up, you can then either let it go further or wind it back. How is that not just the most basic common sense approach to this 
If you've got some Phenomenal. thoughts on that one way or the other, give us a call. 131873 is the number at 16 minutes uh, past eight. Uh, I've got a note here. Gary says, can someone check this? It says Webjet's advertising airfares to Darwin from $15 one way. So these are these super cheap airfares. Darwin, you know, I mean, Dar the place to go really for Darwin is, is during the winter. But right now, um, it's, um, you'd go up you'd there if you You'd could. just go there to live, wouldn't you? Well, you'd go just, just to just stay there. Yeah. There's a reason there's there one way. <laughs> Just, I think it's just, yeah, $15 one way. I'm assuming it, you could get them back. I'm not sure. Could someone check that for me? Because I'm assuming a lot of this is now being I wouldn't be surprised. They on are the basis everything that you'll be airplane, able to yeah. travel. Yeah, that's right. And you can do it provisionally, say, late October, and, and there's some conditions surrounding it, I'm assuming. 131873 is the number. Yes, yeah, $13. And I'm oh. assuming then whatever GST or something added. So on hang, to... hang on a minute. So what they were going to offer it for fifteen dollars, and then someone said, "Oh, fifteen bucks for a flight to Darwin. That's a bit steep. We better knock it down to thirteen. Like, wh where was that marketing meeting? I know. So, hey guys, um, we think we've hit a sweet spot in terms of the price point. Thirteen. Yep. One three one eight seven three. Let's go to Pam, who's on the line with us. Hello, Pam. Oh, hello, John, Joe. Hello. This, uh, for, for the farmers, this bumper season is going to be a bittersweet experience. Just yep. look, for instance, the price of berries, labour-intensive for picking. Profits are going to be so marginal if, in fact, they're even able to harvest the crops. Mm. And so it goes on right through the system. Well, that's the situation with... Well, look, I bought some strawberries yesterday because we talked about it last week. It's $1.50 a punnet. Yeah, so, I mean, the just, raspberries, mate. The raspberries, six fifty. Is Think that about that. Bad. That's terrible. Yeah. All right, oh, my so God. It's, yeah, well, look, uh, the, the Bureau of Agriculture, we're, we're talking about some of the big ones like, like wheat and yep. wool and, and many of these other big crops. They are saying they're going to be like bumper crops huge provided they can harvest them and get them done i think i don't know maybe pam knows but i think with those with those big um uh wheat crops and the, the grain crops that that's a farmer driving a combined harvester who's who's collecting all those so that wouldn't rely as much on or if any on on foreign labor i think it's the fruit picking yep. that really relies super heavily that's on right. the backpackers that's and that's right. as pam was saying that's where that's where they're going to get smashed that's where they have to, we, we, we do have to try and get that done as quickly as possible and a lot of that is in Queensland where the Queensland government comes into play in terms of whether they're going to let those people come in. Yep. 131873 is the number 19 minutes past eight. Yeah, we're just having a look. Can we just get that up again? I just had that a moment ago. Can we get that uh, up again? Just what you go showed me a moment ago. Yeah, I'm just getting it now. There's there's a number of very cheap airfares, and I'm well, they've knocked it down from 13. No, no, they? no, not just that. But we we're just having a look here because again, everyone wants to travel and is desperate to do something. So these are the cheap prices on, on Webjet. And so these would be uh, late October, I'm assuming. They're so off from today, but you but you can only, well, you, you can can't. Buy today, book today, but you have to oh, yeah, travel. Book today, yeah. And we're talking one way to Adelaide, 13 bucks. Uh, oh, Adelaide's 14, Brisbane's 13, Cairns, $15, uh, Melbourne, $15, Perth, $89, Sydney fifteen and uh, Townsville. Well, Townsville's two thirty one dollars. So there you go. Um, other, uh, I think the NRL. Where are the preliminary finals being held for the NRL? Are they being there in? Um, are they being held in Brisbane or Townsville? Because that Townsville number looks very very high. Yeah, so I th that might be why Townsville's there because there'd be people wanting to travel to Townsville, and if you've got a demand of people wanting to get there, that's when they crank up the uh, the fares. One three one eight seven three is the number. Doug's on the line with us now. Hello, Doug. John, uh, does does Joe look like Julius Sumner Miller with his hair like that? <laughs> yeah, look for those for, for those younger listeners. Why is that he was so? a he was a mad professor who had hair everywhere, yep. and his catch yeah, cry yeah. was "Why is it so?" And he used to explain simple things. Yeah, he does look a bit like that actually. And yeah. I also so explain it, simple things. Yeah, he does. He the, does. The, um, the what the mate? Look, I'd love everything to be open now. I'm fully vaccinated, so is my family. Now, the trouble is, the government needs to get onto this passport thing. So that we can actually prove, because the problem is, so if someone says, "Have you been vaccinated?" and the bloke says, "Yes," and he yep. hasn't been, then the argument then happens in that those that person's premises, yep. and what's been happening online to these poor restaurateurs yep. will then yep. happen in the open. And these people seem to like to make a fuss all the time, 
and there'll be the ones that are filming it, and there'll be the ones that put it on social media about rights and everything else. So it's until they get onto that, and they should have this thing, you know, testing it, running it, making sure that it works. It can't be, you know, foolproof. Yep. But they need to be on this now, not in, in, in just at the 16th, and they just start saying yeah. they've got a problem with the app or something. Let's I'll, get on I'll, I'll say this, Doug. They did say that uh, in the early part of October, they're going to try the areas where there's you know, they might do maybe the northern beaches where they've already had a big lockdown on their own. They might open them up a week or two earlier and then they'll test the systems in an area like that. Mm. Now, that's going to invite people saying, oh, they'd be given favouritism. But Doug's quite right. You aren't going to have to have, try it out somewhere. Well, there's a there's a nice little bit of symmetry there, though, because, of course, they were in lockdown when the rest of us were free that's right. uh, about that's nine right. months ago. So they've kind of done their time. It might be a, a nice little poetic payback for them. But, yeah, I think, Doug, you're absolutely right. Obviously, there has to be a sort of one-stop shop sort of app that I, they are working on for when everything opens up, because obviously nothing is going to be workable. You'd have to have some sort of system where if you go into a big venue, um, you, you're able to just you know scan and it tells you you're vaccinated, you get your QR yep. code, the whole bit, yep. yada, yada, yada. But I think just for, like there is already a certificate you can have on your phone that shows you've got a double vaccinated. You can get that from yeah, the MyGov website yep. very easily. Yep. I've got it as well. And again, for small, um, small uh, gatherings or small sort of one-on-one interac- interactions like going to the hairdresser or going, or indeed just going to other retail apart from essential services, um, I really don't see how that would be too difficult um, to, to just do. And people would obviously know you'd, ha- you'd have big penalties for people who, if there was a spot check or whatever, um, and they didn't have it, then they'd be in plenty of trouble, but I think for most, for the most part, you could surely just have a gradual um, uh, increased freedoms for people who have got that on their phone and can simply show it. One three one eight seven three is our number now. Twenty three minutes past eight. Just a couple of uh, text messages here. Uh, Bruce is making the point, and he's saying, "Well, w- when we're talking about getting locked down." We've got huge numbers of vaccinations. The vaccinations are going up and we're seeing very good numbers. They're seeing, this is in New South Wales, the numbers are coming down. They look, it looks like it's it, the curve's being flattened. It's why it's really important for Queensland because the, the, the effect of the vaccinations is being seen in the way the numbers are starting to flatten, the number of cases. There's no doubt about that. Mm. So Queensland, that's why it really, if, if you want to avoid a similar situation, you're going to have to get that vaccination rate up, surely, in yep. Queensland. Yeah, I would Absolutely. have thought. And, and the other thing is interesting also where, um, and Jamal Riffey, he's, uh, there's a line in this too, Jamal Riffey, who's really an Australian hero. We love him. Um, he's, uh, he's from Belmore. He's a GP who's taken some pretty strong stands over the years, but uh, he, he's now setting up a, a, a drive-through uh, clinic which will the be the first operating. one, yep. Yeah, for, awesome. for three days. So for those who've been vaccinated, and most of you would have been, so you'll drive up, you'll pull over, You'll uh, you'll get the shot. They'll give you the paperwork, and then you'll just park your car for the fifteen minutes while exactly. you're waiting. You don't move out of your seat, and for that fifteen yeah. minutes, while they just make sure everything is yeah. okay, and then they go, okay, you can go start the car. I'm, I'm going to go there tomorrow. I'm going there tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, you have a? Have you, is this is this your second yeah. or first? No, I've already had two, but I just you're wanted, going for a third. I, I just knew, want to show. I, knew, I just got the I Falcon. I just got the Falcon back from the smash smash I, repair. I, I, so I just I want knew, to show. I knew it. that was coming. I knew that um, was coming. Speaking of things that are coming. Oh, hang on, no, that came out wrong. Um, the ticket you mentioned, the Webjet ticket. Yeah, have you had a look? Have you bought some? No, 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 no. I was just looking it up because I was sure that this would, this is this is why I work at the Daily Telegraph. Yes, right? I so know. So did no, you yeah, know? Okay. Yeah, okay, here we go. It will now, if you get one of those Webjet tickets, it will actually cost you more money to get the train to Sydney Airport oh, really? than it will cost you to get oh, really? the plane to Darwin. Really? I just, the adult off-peak, mind you. Yep. Price to get to the airport is uh, seventeen dollars sixty nine. Really? Yeah. Okay. All and right. then to get to Darwin's just yeah. thirteen bucks. Hey, so can you're we there. C- can we have a look to see because Queensland's in a different situation. We want to see. Are they, we want to see what the flights are from Brisbane to various parts. Oh, the same. So Brisbane's the same. That, that's from Brisbane or Sydney. That's how much it costs to go to Darwin. Thirteen bucks. Wow. Gee. It's only thirteen bucks to fly to Canberra too, but it's three hundred to return. Yeah, and both the uh, both the NRL games this weekend are in Mackay. So would it be? I don't know why Townsville's two thirty five dollars, but maybe that's because uh, there was there were two big games last weekend. Maybe that that's part of that process. I don't know how they work this. 
131873 is the number now. It's 26 minutes past eight. 131873 is the uh, number. Those those airfares are with uh, Jetstar, we're told. Those airfares. So I'm not here promoting Jetstar, but I guess you think to yourself, uh, a couple of people are saying, and I think correctly, that you book yourself a ticket to, say, West Australia, wherever you might go. You think, all right, fantastic. Northern Territory. Uh, you're worried, particularly if you're in, say, Queensland or Victoria, you might you won't be able to get back. There's people. There's I can't I can't believe, and we almost forget these people. There's people sitting on the border mm. of New South Wales and Victoria who can't travel back into their own state because yeah. they haven't got an exemption. That is ludicrous. Yep. It's just, it, it, of course, it's it is. unforgivable. It's absolutely isn't it? absolutely And look, I take the point of people who are in Queensland and WA saying, well, you know, we can go out, we can go to the pub, we can, you know, see our families. And yes, that's true and that's fantastic, but it's not exactly a long game. Hmm. I yeah. mean, yeah. <laughs> sooner, unless you are planning on becoming a hermit state, yeah. sooner or later you will have to open up. Yeah. And if you are waiting on the virus to be eliminated. And unbelievably, there are still some people out there saying, oh, no, we've got to eliminate this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're waiting on the virus to be eliminated in the rest of Australia, let alone the rest of the world, then you will be a hermit state forever. Yep. Like you will just never... It will oh. just never end. Can I just mention something here? Because New South Wales has particularly gone, and Greater Sydney's gone into very hard lockdown for large parts of, 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 of Western mm. Sydney. So I'm just quoting some stories that have popped up. So three councils have now got to 90% yeah. uh, vaccination. So that's 90% first dose. And you assume if someone's had the first dose, they'll get the second. Yeah. I, I wonder, because I, I wonder whether we're going to get to a much higher level than we thought. That you know that people are going. Well, let's go out and do this. And the the higher, the more, mm. the more we have vaccinated, we'll be able to go and do things. And maybe I, I know yep. in Cumberland and Fairfield, uh, they're getting significantly fewer cases. Canterbury, Bankstown as well, yep. even though they've got significant numbers of cases. But you're getting this very high level of of vaccination now of of ninety percent, mm. which you know is and an amazing drop in cases. What a coincidence. That's right. So the question then is, all right, do you wait a bit longer, get the vaccination levels right up, and once they're at that height, you can start to really open up to the extent... I think, you know, to, maybe... to be honest, I think there are leaners and lifters in this world, and the leaners are just going to be expecting everyone else to get vaccinated because they're too scared to, or yep. they won't because they're crazy, or yep. they're just too lazy, or they feel like they're entitled to a vaccine that Dr. Google recommended for them, or whatever it may be, and... And and I think if we have that kind of, well, we've got to wait more, wait more, wait more till we get to that rate, then that will actually um, be, be, be counterproductive. I think you do it by doing effectively what the government is doing and saying, you know what, if you're vaxxed, you're free. And that is the only way you're going to get free because that's the only way people are going to get vaxxed. 131873 is the number now, 28 minutes to nine. A couple of people asking about the return airfares. Could someone check for me? Because ultimately <laughs> yes. you charge 13, 15 bucks. Uh, how much does it cost to get back? Can we have a look at that as well if we can? I just want to get to another you're story. flying from Queensland. Before we get back get to back calls, back to uh, this story, we touched on it last night. Christina Keneally, there's been an entire day of debate surrounding Christina Keneally, but uh, the former Prime Minister Paul Keating, he's probably the only major Labor figure, um, you know, outside of those within the Parliament, who's come out defending her. Mm. Now, he wrote a long piece in defence of her in an interview he did, but the last couple of paragraphs, I think, gave it away because he he pointed to what she did on Barangaroo, mm. which is really, a, you know, probably almost the, 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 the vanity project PK's of Paul Keating, project. but it was yep. his pet project. And I think what he produced there is fantastic. I think it's great. I love, I love what's there at Barangaroo, that headland that he drove. But she was the minister, then the premier, that helped drive that through. She took it out of the planning controls and the NIMBYs and a lot of the councils, mm-hmm. they were pushed aside to get it the done. The main basket weavers. As yeah, to get it them. done. Yep. So I think in the end, that's why he that's why he likes her. Yeah, I think. Well, on the other hand, favor. On the other hand, you've got Tanya Plibersek. Now, I mean, Tanya Plibersek's appeared this afternoon on the Drive Time show in Sydney. So, I mean, you're talking here, the deputy leader, yep. Tanya Plibersek. Um, and a lot it, of people are saying... Future leader. Yeah, but you listen to Tanya Plibersek and you think, does she, it, she was asked the question. Mm. And this to me sounds like a politician who's been asked to eat a so and so sandwich and has to <laughs> pretend it's yummy. Uh, this is a little bit of it. How does Labor defend 
putting Christina, as much merit as she has, into a seat that's a long way from where she lives? Well, obviously she will move to the seat if she's pre-selected as the Labor candidate. She's made that very clear. But, you know, I'm a glass half full kind of a person. I I think it's fantastic that we've got Christina Keneally, Deb O'Neill, Tulee, three fantastic women who are all prepared to put their hand up for the Labor Party and and fight hard to represent um, Labor in the in the Senate or the House of Reps. I think it's terrific. And uh, all three of them are real talents. But in terms of representing, based on what our political system is meant to be, is it not meant to be you're meant to elect one of your locals to represent you in the parliament, whatever side of politics you're on? Yeah, I, I think it's really important to live in your electorate, and I think it's important. But even before important. that point, Tanya? Yeah, uh, look, I've, uh, Christina said that she's going to move into the electorate, and I think uh, if she's successful, I think that's really important because it, you do need to be able to speak up for the day-to-day lives of the people that you represent, and you can't know that by visiting occasionally. Yeah, well, you can. I mean, she's she's not going to come out and say, I think it's a bad decision. But Yeah, well, on the plus side, she's um, now put herself up for selection for the State of Origin squad. Christina? No, Tanya. She's in, not the strongest player, but incredibly good at ducking and weaving. <laughs> ducking and weaving. Now, Troy Bramston wrote a piece in the Australian <laughs> today saying, look, she did. She, she was she was parachuted into Heffron to replace mm. Deidre Grusevin. For those outside Sydney, yep. this was a this was a safe seat in the state parliament. She then uh, she was then put into the premiership by Eddie Abed and uh, uh, Joe Tripodi to, re- to get rid of Nathan Rees, who was trying to yep. who was trying to get rid of them. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then she lost the election. They reduced to yep. 20 seats. Uh, so now correct me. He says she did, she hasn't been able to win a vote. She didn't win a ballot and for the she, Senate. She was parachuted in. Yep. And didn't win when she ran against John Alexander. Against John Benelong. Alexander in Benelong. Yep. She wasn't able to win a ballot for the ministry. So um, this is the shadow ministry. So Ed Husick stepped aside and she moved into that position. And then... Then uh, she. This is a pre-selection, which she wouldn't win if there was a pre-selection in in Fowler. Fowler so they're yeah. they're they're putting her in over the views of the local. <laughs> look, it is. Members. It's obviously it's obviously not a great look. Although I will I will say a few things. Firstly, um, her being installed into the premiership was a hospital pass. She was never ever ever going to have Buckley's chance of of winning or even coming close in that election. I think everyone knows that. So to say that she lost that would be a bit like saying, you know, you know, jumping off a skyscraper and saying, oh, you didn't survive the fall. Um, the In terms of Benelong, well, Benelong's really only been won by Labor once in modern history, and that was when Maxine McHugh took it off John Howard, and it took work choices to turn that into a Labor seat. So um, I, I don't think um, you can really hold that against uh, Christina Keneally. And the other thing is... The, I mean, and then and then the the factional shenanigans um, going on with the top. But she didn't have the support of her own faction. Senator Spock. No, that's right. She's a, well, she's a strange fish. Uh, KK, in the sense, I I actually I, I know her pretty well. Um, I'll have to say, on, on Paul Keating, you know how every journo in their career only knows they've actually succeeded in life if they get an angry phone call from mm. Paul Keating. So I got mine when I was working at the telly, and he rang up and he absolutely ripped into me and I was just sitting there just beaming with pride you got and, the, you got and, the and I got I got the full on I got the full on uh, treatment the full on red hot poker and what had provoked it was an article I'd written not about him but about Christina Keneally and oh, it was really? actually yeah and it was a, it was a really um, light hearted kind of um, satirical um, article about the, the secret diary of Christina mm. Keneally while she was overseas and sort of writing about her entry in the diary while all mm. these um, Machiavellian machinations yep. were going on in the New South Wales Labor Party back home. So it was very funny. And I was friends with Christina Keneally back then as well. So yep. we, were, we, we were maids, we've got a similar sense of humour, blah, blah, blah. Um, but Paul Keating absolutely, is, absolutely loves her and is extremely territorial or yeah. I don't know what the word is, but something, something like... Something like very um, supportive of her. Uh, so, yeah, that's right. So, something almost like chivalric, mm. but holding a large meat cleaver yep. with blood stains on it. Um, so he, he defends her very, very fiercely. Um, but it, I got to say, so having having put all those disclaimers aside, I have to say her her going to Fowler is just a terrible, terrible, terrible look, and yep. it's a terrible look for a party that. Um, has been overtaken, not necessarily for all the right reasons and not necessarily always a good thing, by this sense of identity politics and, you know, it's got to be all about race, it's got to be all about gender. Well, this has just completely put the lie to that mm. because you've got 
you know, a, someone who is as white as the driven snow. Sorry, Christina, it's no one's fault. Um, uh, coming into an extremely yeah. multicultural. Do you, do you think they're going to back down, or they just ride through it? No, they they kind of have to because the whole, the reason the whole thing started is because. Um, I know it's a factional thing. It's a factional thing, and and basically yeah. it would be a greater affront to the the factional system in New South Wales, which you do have to respect, for her to get the top factional uh, top spot on the Senate ticket, which is the, yeah. the 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 province of the New South Wales right. That would be a greater affront to yeah. so, to so order. I'll have to just than, than for her to go to Fowler, yeah. which is a much more publicly yeah. ridiculous. So thing as I to said do. earlier, they'll eat that sandwich and pretend it's yummy. They'll have to, but it really, it really is, it really is yep. an absolute shame. I've got yep. a lot of sympathy for Chris Hayes um, and his his brother Jared, who have just pointed to the absolute ridiculousness of this. That you have this young star candidate of the community. She's female. She's from an ethnic background. She's perfectly representative of that community, and you're having to boot her aside um, to to yep. parachute in in someone who you know. I think is a. I think Keneally is a very good performer, and I think yep. you want to have her. In the in the, the shadow cabinet, perhaps not in home affairs, because yep. that's not yep. the portfolio Labor wants to draw attention to. That's just a little, right. no, okay. a little free advice for you there, guys. Right. If you live in the area, you might want to give us a call. one three one eight seven three is the number. We're going to take a break. We'll get back to your call straight after this. Just a little bit of uh, political insider. You know, we're, we're both political Yeah, nerds. sorry, I can't help it. My bollocking from Paul Keating happened on air. Uh, really? He was, he was Prime Minister. Had him in the studio for half an hour. In the lead up to the 1996 election, I'm not sure if it was during the campaign, but it was a yeah. you know, big in studio interview. And what did I he say? And, do you remember? No, no, he finished. Yeah. Left, see, bye bye, ad break. And I was told that Peter Costello had turned up in our Canberra studio, wanted to you know, write a reply. Yeah. I said, well, all right. Well, uh, you know, so uh, on the line, we have the uh, shadow treasurer, Peter Costello. So he talks for four or five minutes and goes on. And then next thing, up on the board, Poor kid. from his car. <laughs> You didn't tell me <laughs> we were going to have to... Well, look, what? you know, he started screaming about the fact that Peter Costello had been there and he hadn't been told that Costello would be coming on and he wanted to reply to what Costello said. Yeah. I said, all right, okay. And then Costello rings back and says he'd like oh, to reply yeah, to Paul yeah. Keating well, that, So yeah. what we did is we finished the show, turned the transmitter off and let them keep going for another couple of hours. <laughs> so they didn't realise it wasn't on air. Uh, 18 minutes to nine. At a quarter to nine, 131873 is the uh, number. Uh, Gary's on the line with us now. Hello, Gary. Uh, how are you going? Not bad, Gary. You're uh, in very north New South Wales, are you? Hard to pronounce. It's called Mungandai. Ah, you're in beautiful Mungandai. Someone's written nun- with an N here. I know Mungandai quite well. Yeah, yeah. So very close to oh. the border. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, actually, you can't get any closer because Mungandai is on both sides of the border. Oh, really? Okay, okay. All right. Okay. So we have a New South Wales side and a Queensland side. Oh. Of Mung and I, and they, um, without going into too too much, they closed the hospital down the other day because of people from New South Wales who were nurses couldn't go into the hospital, so they closed the hospital down. Anyway, they've oh opened it back God. up. It was yep. good. Yep. Anyway, so, but the the problem I have is I have my two sons. One is nineteen and an apprentice at uh, in Noosa. Mm-hmm. They live up there. I, we're separated. My wife and I yep. are separated. Yep. And then I have a son um, who's 14 that's a student. So I asked at the Border Patrol, which we have, you've got to go past it. Well, I go past every day because of the essential worker. Um, if my oldest son can come home, he wanted to come home for the weekend, and they said no. Oh, no, sorry, they didn't say that. They said, yes, he can. Yep, that's fine. But then he has to fly out from New South Wales, then he has to self quarantine for two weeks. <laughs> It's so just... then I asked, okay, I've got a, my son who's a student um, in um, Noosa. Can he come home and see me? And they said so he's got to do the same thing. I said, well, hang on. We've got about a 1,000 kids coming home for holidays, coming over the border, who are boarding students that are in, um, like their parents are in New South Wales, but they, they board in, in Queensland. And this really, and, and look, I've got to tell you, the border people, the, 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 the police and the army that are on there are fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. They try and help you so much. So that, right. the, the, the lady said to me this morning, she said, look, leave it for, give me a couple of hours and I'll look into it and see what I can do. 
And then she said to me, so I went back over and, and, and talked to her. I'm sorry, I'm, um, I'm sort of talking a bit of giggles at the moment. But I went back over and talked to her, and she said, look, y- y- your son, I think, uh, the youngest bloke, it's a student, will be okay, I think. Yeah, I was, the, yeah. the oldest bloke, uh, I no, he definitely can't, no, unless he wants to fly back and... Fly back yeah. by an aeroplane. Well, well Gary, I, I just think that it's bizarre. If you want to get, get Gary's details, we just take a couple of these because when people are in situations, we, we have been able to pass it on and get something done. I'm sure, not sure how it's going to work there. But I think when all of this is over, and again, how, how that's going to happen, are we ever going to be able to resolve this and try and sort out how we can have the national government have more of a say over how these things work. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you something, because the Essential Group, they, they produce opinion polls. Yep. They've put their poll out today, state government response to COVID-19. The New South Wales government, it actually dropped to 40% last week, 40%, which is you know, approval of their response, which is down from um, 75% in March, down to 40%. It did <laughs> well, go up to... That's 40, what happens. It went up to 46%. Once people knew the roadmap was out and there'd be a chance mm. of something happening. But Victoria's 50%. Mm. Queensland's 65%. Yep. Uh, South Australia, 67%. And West Australia, 87% approval. <laughs> yes. So, but, but Queensland's still 65%. It. Yeah, you can see what they do. But I mean, again, like obviously for those border communities, it is absolutely terrible. Obviously, I think they should be opening the border and getting on board the, the national roadmap like they promised to, like everyone else is and yep. like New South Wales is suffering for. Yep. Um, but yes, you can certainly see clearly it is much better to be able to live freely within your own state than to be locked down within your own state with only the prospect of maybe being able to travel yep. everywhere except Australia at some see, point. See, all of those stories, like that story we heard there, the people on the border with Victoria who can't actually get home to Victoria, mm. grey nomads who've got homes. Who just want to get home? Yeah, that's right. And so the question for those governments is how many people's uh, livelihoods or happiness or you know sanity are they prepared to sacrifice to keep those opinion polls high? Well, this is the thing, because those people obviously aren't happy with the government, but there are others that say maybe quietly they'd go, well, as long as we're keeping it out of here. But Victoria, of course, well, that's not the case. And, and I've, not the case. I've, I've seen people who openly say that. Victoria, again, I suppose... Uh, uh, certainly, you could, in Victoria, at least they could say that it's someone else's fault. I mean, we can't. We have to yeah, put but, out. But if Victoria's got now well over four hundred cases and, and in the situation, and it seems to be getting worse. If you've got, a, if you've got a fully vaccinated couple sitting on the border, they want to come home. Why can't they come home? Oh, of course they should be able to come. home. No, that's insane. So I thought you were talking about why. No, I'm talking why about Victoria that. Why not? Had a higher approval rating. Yeah, it's not like they're trying to keep it out. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's absolute insanity. Make, it but they've no got a default to position. All those eliminationist premiers, even even in Victoria, where patently they have failed to eliminate it, but they're still just carrying on with the lockdown as though yep. that's still going to happen. Um, even though they're... Again, it's like the, the mouth is saying something different to what the body well, is that's doing. Right. I mean, if you're going to be serious, you'd help those people on the border and you'd help the fellow we just heard from there. Nine and a half to nine. 131873 is number six minutes to nine. Anthony's on the road on the Christina Keneally story. Hello, Anthony. Hey, uh, just about that, uh, Christina Kearnley moving to Cabramatta. She did one positive thing. She'd drive the house prices down because we're all moving out. Well, you'd move out. <laughs> you oh, feel yeah. that strongly about it. Well, I don't know. I know. Could you imagine a bar on Jay's Ford Falcon and you all trailer wheeling into Cabramatta? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> on a slightly oh. unrelated note, I just got the Falcon back from the panel beaters this Arvo, and it is looking Fly. Good it on you, Anthony. Fantastic. We can go there. We can go down there together, Anthony. You and me, mate. You know what? We'll you'd go like, you'd like we're, we're the first street walk at the election. You'd like Anthony to be involved, yeah. wouldn't you? And you'd yeah. be there with your telegraph. Just be curb camera. crawling him, wouldn't you? With, with wouldn't you? You uh, know what? You know what we'd be doing. The first thing we do is because it's, it's the Reba Ma story all over again, isn't it? You'd be, oh, you'd, be, you'd be going there and checking the fridge to see when they bought the milk. Yeah, exactly. Um, look, we've got uh, the article from the Burnett Institute arguing it's not the vaccination rate that's flattened the curve, but the restrictions. Uh, that's from Marcus who sent that through. I'll have a look at that. Look, the, the, look uh, I think it's definitely both. Obviously, the vaccination rate is going to take a long time to... Um, 
to no one's pretending that you can just have no restrictions whatsoever and let it, let it rip. Well, the Doherty the thing fact, says you, you get to seventy percent, you can start to loosen right. things, but you've got to exactly do a lot right. of uh, cross checking. And but again, that's and yeah. that's and that's that's reducing the, yep. the the transmission among everybody, not just among the vaccinated. That hasn't been tested yet. Yep. All right. And the Ford Falcon. The Falcon. Yours? How yep. old is it? Two thousand and eight. So good they stopped making them. Yeah. <laughs> what do we? What does the Australian market want? A bigger, more fuel-consumptive car. Yep. That's what they said. Now, Focus uh, groups all came you back. were working at the Telegraph at the time that Reba Ma, now for our Queensland yep. listeners, she was a controversial New South Wales MP and Health Minister. You were working at the Telegraph when she uh, was she, she there. Was the, she was the member for Cabramatta, yeah, yeah. but she lived in Coogee. That's right. But, and, and there were and, stories written about it, but she then got married in Las Vegas. Were you yeah. responsible for the famous headline, Reba... <laughs> Las Vegas. It just writes itself. Reba Las it just Vegas. Writes itself. That sort of headline. That no one's responsible for that. Fantastic. God is responsible. It was wonderful. For that. All right. Thank you, Joe. Work, my we'll friend. see you again see soon. 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 Three and a half to nine.